A B Ribbon has been around since the beginning. And in the beginning, it's, it was very tough. And we went to the same shear, and I had easy access, right? And whenever I asked Abe for something and help, he was right there. So Abe Ribbon has done a lot for Shmakaleno in all these years behind the scenes. So I want to thank him for that. And now just uh, 10 words or less about Dr. Merrill Tisch because time is of the essence and as Mr. Yeager said, she doesn't need much introduction. I know the Tishes because I used to be executive director of the Williamsburg Hawaii and Billy Tisch was on the board of Federation. He used to visit our center quite often. So we go back to the family a long time and Merrill visited our school uh, 2008, as I said before. Um, remarkable would be understatement, devoted, passionate, a leader. And she's really committed because she could be doing many other things that's uncommitted. But she's committed and she is in the limelight and sometimes she says things and she means it and it's misconstrued but it's the fact and it's the truth and she speaks her mind because she believes in what she's doing so it's it's an honor for Shmakaleno to have someone who understands education who understands children but more so who understands children with disabilities and feels for their rights to become who they are and who they can be. And it's our responsibility to make sure that they do. And that is, in essence, Dr. Merrill Tisch. And I'd like to turn it over to A. Wiedemann. Direction. I didn't realize I'd be about the 11th person to do so. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my remarks short and also more on the personal side. You know, everybody knows the Tisch family. It's one of the most prominent families in the United States, one of their most prominent Jewish philanthropists, and their names are plastered all over the place. And Merrill, being part of the family, could have easily chosen a simpler way to run her life. It could have been a lady of leisure, enjoying the fruits of the family philanthropy, but she chose an opposite path, really. I mean, she's a worker. She's working almost every day. I mean, those of you who are here from Albany know that going there is not a lot of fun, but she does it regularly, winter, summer, all year round. And then she's involved in so many different causes, she never ever rests on the laurels. But there's another thing that I think um, I know learned about Merrill, working with her at the Met Council for the last 25 years, but particularly for the last two very challenging years. The word no is not in her vocabulary. She, when something has to get done, it doesn't matter who says that it's not gonna happen. If she says it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And I wanna look around here. I see a lot of members of the Met Council staff and Met Council, uh, council leaders from around the city. I want to tell you clearly, and I've been very involved over many years, but certainly in the last two, Met Council would not exist today if it was not for Merrill Tisch. And, <laughs> and that's because of her fighting spirit, her, her knowledge that this is something that has to be preserved, that has to be maintained, that has to be taken care of. She doesn't benefit from it, it's got her a fair amount of grief, but she knows it's the right thing for the community, it's the right thing for the Jewish people, and so she fought against many odds and made it happen. So I want to thank her personally from this podium, and she'd be thanked from many podiums for making this wonderful institution thrive again, and it uh, will uh, under her leadership. And I just want to say for the gals, you know, everybody knows the public things that Merrill does. I've been involved with a number of 
private things that she's been involved in with no publicity. When I've turned to her, people in the, in this community, by the way, not just in the community that she lives in, but people who needed some extraordinary help or whatever it was, and without fanfare, without publicity, before, after, or during, she uh, rose to the challenge and did what had to be done and helped the people, and truthfully to this day, many of them don't know about it, and that's the way she runs her life. So without further ado, and introduction number 12, Dr. Tish. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me here today. I am deeply gratified to be joined by my colleague, Dr. Kathy Cashin, who is truly a champion for every child in every school, be it public, private, charter, and every teacher in every corner of this country and state. It has been a very challenging time um, in so many different ways for the Jewish community. We stand here during a time what I think is deep crisis for our community um, in negotiations between Iran and our country are very uppermost in the minds of myself and my family our commitment to the survival of the great state of Israel has in some ways never felt more challenging. And so it is during these days of Tisha B'Av that it is really important to take stock and remember that we are Klal Yisrael, we are a great people, we are a magnificent people, and we are people on whom a great challenge has been thrust. And in my work in the public sector, I go and I meet with so many different groups of people and parents, but there is always something that stands out in the community when a mother on Long Island or in Syracuse or Utica gets up and she will say, I am the mother of a special needs child. And there is enormous frustration and enormous anxiety and enormous uncertainty. And what that mother really wants me to do is say, I can fix your child. But Dr. Cashin and I know we cannot fix what God has done. We must accept it, but what we can do is stand up to help every family and every child in these most challenging circumstances. And so, this morning, as every morning, my 88-year-old father came to my house because he has, for the past 30 years, come to have breakfast with myself and my husband and my children when they lived with us. He taught my husband to lay tefillin. And this morning, while they were davening the Shema Nasser, I heard my father intone, as I do every morning, Shema Kolenu, Adonai Eloheinu, Chusvrachem Oleinu, V'kabel Barachamim Uvratzon, Et Tefilatenu. I believe that with all my core. I am honored to be among you. I am honored to advocate for you and for your children and to congratulate you on choosing this as your life's work. Be well.